Good morning. This is Brother Des coming to you again this morning. Thanking God for life and what he has done for us. And again, we own the message of hope. We have had uh, several messages about hope. Today, we own another one. The Bible teaches that there is hope for healing. When in this life, we face trials, tribulations, sickness, pain. Remember, God is with us. Hope. He helps us to renew our strength. And you know, he heals our wounds. This morning, as I look at hope in healing, there are four groups of wounded people. There are people who are hoping for physical healing. There are people who are hoping for emotional healing. There are people who are, are hoping for spiritual healing. And then there are people who are hoping to be recipients of divine healing. As we get a little background on healing, in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, it tells us that now spiritual gifts, gifts that, that the Spirit gives, he said, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to misunderstand what's going on. I want you to know the truth about this thing, that it's the manifestation of the Spirit who gives the gift of wisdom, the gift of, of knowledge. He gives the, the gift of uh, walking miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, and various kinds of tongues, meaning various languages out there. And then he gives uh, the gift of interpretation of uh, languages. But all these work by the same Spirit. But notice there is another gift. And it's not singular. It says the gifts of healings. The gifts, plural, of healings. And so when we think about the gifts of healings, and, and we look at uh, the hope of healing, and we see it from the physical uh, body and pain and so on. Hope for healing through various physicians. Note, God gave these gifts. And we find that doctors, PAs, nurse practitioners, nurses, dentists, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, all these various fields of those and, and the other natural medicines and so on. Sometimes, though, they only could do so much. And people are still sick. But there is still hope. But don't give up on your doctors. We need to go to them and get checked up and, and get ourselves uh, together. And if we're sick, we know that they can take care of us to a point. But then there is also uh, healing through the elders of the church. The church I'm talking about is not a building. I'm talking about the called out assembly of Jesus Christ. Those believers who know him as Savior have been called out by the Spirit of God, and they are the church, these people, the souls who are saved. And so the elders could give hope to physical healing also. In fact, the Bible says in James, if any among you are sick, let him, the person who's sick, call for the elders of the church. That's the, the pastor and so on. The elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him or her up. And if they had committed sin, uh, their sins will be forgiven. And says, even we, we need to learn, I, I guess many people are leery about this, say, confess your faults one to another, those people who are born again, part of the church. Because, you know, you can't tell anybody about your faults, right? Or be down the street in a hurry. But we find here, the Lord will raise him up. And when you confess your faults and pray for each other, they said that you could be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman does much. And so we find that people like the prophet talking about prayer is like Elias. He prayed for rain and rain came. Jeremiah says, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved. For you are the one 
that I praise. Exodus 23, 25 says, Worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be upon what? Your food and your water. Many times it's through the food and the water that could make people physically sick. And so we find it says, Worship the Lord. Fall down before him, frustrate, give him all, and his blessings will be upon you, me, and everybody else who would worship him, notice, in spirit and in truth. And then we find in Isaiah 38, 16 through 17, it says, O Lord, by these men live, and in these things in the life of my spirit, so will you recover me and make me to live. Behold, for peace I have great bitterness, but thou in thy love and my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. And we find, for the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They go down to the pit, cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he or she shall praise thee. And I do this this day, the father to the children who make known your truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing the songs to string instruments. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Isaiah said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it on the plaster upon the boil. And he shall recover. Talking about sickness and God healing. But then there's something else about uh, healing. Not only there is hope through doctors and, and hope through prayer of those, the, the people who come and pray for you, the elders of the church. But we find that in this, the individual, him or herself, must have faith. Faith and patience are needed to physical healing. In Romans chapter 8, 24, it says, For in hope we are saved. Hope which is not seen, it hopes for the things that, that he sees, you know. But if we hope for that which we do not see, and we wait with patience, we find that hope is coming and there could be healing. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But they that wait upon the name or wait upon the Lord, that's Jehovah, shall renew their strength, get strong. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, Hope in this promise, but I will restore you to your health and heal your wounds, declare the Lord. Hallelujah. The second thing about hope, hope for the healing of the emotional wounds. Note, deep down, deep-seated, there are many childhood damages in our lives. It could be from the things we experience as children. And we carry these on into adulthood and we find that rage and that animosity and, and that hate is in there. And we find what happens? We become emotionally sick. It could be a divorce, loss of a job, a killing. May not be that you stab somebody or shoot them with a gun, but sometimes the very mouth we have, we kill people with our mouths. The tongue is a terrible enemy, and it puts on the whole soul of people, the, 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 the flames of hell, James tells us. And as we look at this hope for healing, the emotional healing, we find that healing from the troubled heart, there is the troubled heart, there is the peaceless soul, and there is the fearful person. And as we look at the troubled heart in John 14 and, and verse 6 over there, Jesus Christ was speaking with his disciples, telling them he was going away. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry about what's going to happen that I'm going I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm coming back for you. So don't trouble yourself. That trouble heart and that emotional wound, you know. And as I mentioned, the, the, the trouble heart could be from many other things, deep-seated, long years ago. And then we find in uh, Proverbs 17, 22, it says, Hope, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit 
dries up the bones. So don't let that trouble heart dry up your bones. Be cheerful. It's a good medicine. Having that hope that's in Jesus Christ. And then when we think about the peaceless soul, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. The world doesn't give peace. Look like we have it right now. Peaceless. No peace. People running over each other. People don't care about each other. Listen, this is how it's going to be in the last days. Jesus Christ said that even those who know him or who claim to know him will turn against each other. The last days. And friends, don't let your heart be troubled. Find peace in that soul. The peace Jesus said I leave with you is different from what the world gives. Because the world knows no peace. And, and David and Psalm said, there will be no peace until peace and righteousness kiss each other. That's when Jesus Christ returns. And then the fearful person. There are so many who live in fear. Fear to be on the streets. Fear to walk, knowing what will happen to you. Fear of being shot innocently, you know. But Jesus Christ said, in his word. Remember, he is the word. And over there in Isaiah 41, 10, my, my verse that I keep with me, my life verse, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Do not fear. And then third, there is hope for the healing of spiritual wounds. Jesus Christ was wounded. He was wounded in the Old Testament, it tells us, he was wounded for our transgressions, the laws of God that we have broken. He was bruised for our iniquities, the sins that we have committed. And with his stripes, we are healed. The New Testament tells us, with his stripes we are healed. The stripes that he received by Pilate and the Roman soldiers. And on that cross, it was for you and for me. That we, who are spiritually wounded, can be healed. Philippians 4.19 tells us, And my God will meet all our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Oh, as we think about spiritual healing, my mind goes back to the woman at the well. You know, she was there and she was talking with Jesus. And listen, she met the last man that really brought her some comfort and healing for her soul. And in all the conversations, she was going here with religion and all the rest. And Jesus said, go call your husband. What he did, he went on the thing that was spiritually wounding this woman. And we find she had, and, and, and she said, I have no husband. He said, true. You've had so many, and the one you have is not yours. And she went to town and she said, come see a man who tells me everything. He'll tell you too. Oh, spiritual healing. And she was healed. History says that because of this woman's testimony, the church in Philippi was, start, was started. And I think of David, as David said in Psalm 51, after he committed sin, committed adultery, looking at Bathsheba and all the rest on the roof of the house and put a son in front of the line where he was killed. And David said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me from mine iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Behold, I was shaped. Lord, you know, you knew that I was uh, shaped in iniquity. You know that. He said, but you know, when you speak and you judge, 
Behold, Lord, thou desires the truth of the, the inward parts, that part that has us spiritually sick. And he said, purge me with hyssop. Wash me out, Lord, clean me, and I will be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness. The bones which thou hast broken will rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart and blot out all those iniquities. Oh, God bless. He said, don't cast me away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. What it was in those days the Holy Spirit came upon. He rested on, but he didn't indwell. But when Jesus Christ came, we thank him that he lives within us. And he said, Lord, when this happened and you restore to me the joy of my salvation. We're talking about spiritual healing. He says, then will I be able to teach transgressions. I will be able to teach people about your word. Oh, hallelujah. And then we find that there is divine healing for all wounds. Whether they be physical, whether they be emotional, whether they be spiritual. Divine healing. Jesus Christ is the healer. Hope we have. Such people claim to, to heal, to be, to be, you know, through divination, uh, witchcraft, necromancing, and all these fortune telling and all the rest of it. Walking with the minds of people, still there is no hope. Look at that woman at the well. She spent all the money that she had trying to get her blood issue taken care of. But the answer was faith and hope. And she said, if I could only touch the hem of the garment of this man I'm hearing about, I will be made whole. And she touched him through the crowd. And Jesus said, who touched me? Oh, hallelujah. Her faith and hope, she was made whole. The centurion, whose daughter was sick, he asked Jesus to come and heal my daughter. Jesus uh, told him, okay, I'll be there. But we find as a centurion say, Lord, listen to me. I am a man of control and, and I have soldiers under my command. And when I say do this, they do it. And I know you. You can just say the word. And my daughter would be healed. Divine healing. And we find that Jesus spoke the word. He said, what great faith in this man. Yes, faith. And then the man at the pool. They carried him dead daily. They laid him by the pool that when the water be troubled, that he would be in the pool, but he couldn't go. No man would take him. They were all concerned about themselves. But Jesus Christ was the answer. Man, take up your bed and walk. Jesus left promise. We wonder what happened to that promise. He said, people who follow me will even do greater works. Listen, John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he or she do. Because I go to my father. The church has to be built. Power from the Holy Spirit, she could be in the people of God for healing, spiritual healing, physical healing, emotional healing, seeing miracles perform. Today, today, are you ready for your divine healing? There is a divine healer, Jesus Christ. We, we don't, we, you know, we don't have to call a secretary to make an appointment. But he has a hotline, which is open 24 hours a day. There are no busy tones, no reappointments. 
No waiting. He said, call, and he will answer. Call, and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says, call upon me, and I will answer thee, and will show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Four groups of wounded people. Physical need, physical healing. People hoping for emotional healing. People hoping for spiritual healing. And people hoping to be recipients. To be those who would fall into being healed through divine intervention. Today is your day. Him or her that comes to me, Jesus said, I will in no wise reject or cast out. And he has been calling for a long time. He's still knocking. He's still knocking at the door, the heart's door. And he said, if any man or woman will open that door unto me, I will come in and will sup with him. Let him come in today. Just call Jesus and he'll answer you. If you have any more questions about healing and spiritual healing, emotional healing, and divine healing and all the rest, you can contact me at dcoverly at howard.edu. That's dcoverly at howard.edu. I'll answer your email. Listen, trust him today. And oh, what a day it's going to be with all the healing and all that, that we are talking about. One of these days, he's coming back. What else is going to happen? Armageddon. The Great Tribulation. Then Armageddon. Friends, get your copy and read about it. So on Amazon, let God bless you today and use you for his honor and his glory. And may you have a great day. Live long. Be safe. Amen.